Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will see how we can develop a flood forecasting model using feed forward neural network. So first we will have a look at the data. If we see here, this is the data on which we will be working on the code and develop a flood forecasting model. So the first column here we see is today's discharge. The second column here is tomorrow's discharge and r represents today's rainfall so to understand it clearly if we see the last values of the data you can see that we are giving today's discharge as input and asking it to predict tomorrow's discharge which is 127.12 so we will use today's discharge and today's rainfall to predict tomorrow's discharge so this is the data we'll be using for developing our model so let's directly go into python and start developing our code so if we open our python the first step for us to have is to input our excel file and read the data so we can use these lines where i am inputting the part of the excel file using this and using pandas we will read the excel file so we can also use print statement so that we can see the data so if we run this code we can see in a few seconds here we can see that qt q plus t1 and r all are taken correctly so our data which we are trying to import is correctly imported the next step is we need to say what is the input and target data using these two lines where x is equal to in this function if we see i want to take rainfall and today's discharge as our inputs and the other column as our targets so i'm just specifying it as x and y values once we have specified it as x and y values the next step is to normalize the data because when we are using neural networks it's easier and better for it to understand the data in terms of 0 to 1 so it helps it to understand the relationship better so we normalize the data to do so we'll be using minimax scalar which normalizes the data from 0 to 1 so using these two lines we say that the feature scale and target scale are minimax scalars and then we fit it to the input data of x and y so that it makes the data between 0 to 1 once we made the data from 0 to 1 the next step is to split the data into training and testing set here we'll make the data from 80 percent of training to 20 percent of testing we will use this line to be able to divide the data into training and testing with inputs and targets and we will add this additional statement of random state so that every time we run the model it splits the same way and it does not cause any issue of rerun of the model so this is the first stage where we prepared input our data prepared it and made it ready to develop our model the next step is to develop a feed forward neural network model to develop this model we will use tensorflow so we need to import tensorflow modules and other python packages these lines of packages covers our minimax scalar our test split and our tensorflow packages which we will use to build our model now we will start building our feed forward neural network model so we can use these lines of three lines which denote three layers of our neural network as you see here the first line here indicates that we are using 10 neurons and we are using an activation function of relu and we are also stating the shape of number of inputs which we are giving so this layer is the input plus first hidden layer whereas this second line indicates the second hidden layer which is of 10 neurons again and this third layer indicates our output layer so when we use this keras dot sequential it is connecting all the three layers and developing our feed forward neural network using these three lines we are able to develop the general framework of our feed forward neural network the next step is once we made our model we need to compile our model so it knows what kind of optimization function it uses and the loss calculation using this line we 
we are able to tell the model to take what kind of optimization and also what kind of loss function which it should use to be able to calculate the losses. So here we are using mean square error as the loss function. Once we know this, we can also know that we can keep on running this code until we get a good result. But we need to be able to stop our code so that it does not cause overtraining. So what we'll do in the next step is to provide a function which stops overtraining. So using these lines of early stopping, what I am saying here is I'm asking the code to go to each epoch and see how is it running and if the validation loss is not changing after 10 epochs or 10 loops of what it's making, I want the code to stop and give me the best possible value until there and then I will use that value to predict my results. So now we made our model, we compiled it and also told it where to stop. The next step is to train the model. We can use these lines as we see here. Here we are saying model.fit and I am saying it to take the input training and target data and use the number of echoes and also validate it based upon these two data sets. So this model takes these inputs, validates with this and also provides an early stopping function. Once the model is trained and it stops at the best possible value, the next step I tell the model is to predict it based upon the test values. So I'm asking the model to predict it based upon the calibration which he has done in the training module. So here, because we made the data from 0 to 1, I'm trying to bring it back to its original scale by using inverse transform so that we compare our values to the original discharge values. So these three lines make prediction and brings back the value from 0 to 1 to its original scale. Once the predictions are done, the next step is I want to plot the data so that we need to check its accuracy. We can do that using these lines. So I'm plotting a figure and I'm saying please plot between the test and the predicted with the label as predictions and then also plot a ideal fit line so that I know how good the result is. Also here I want to add the evaluation module where I'm calculating mean absolute error and also R square so that in the next step I will plot it here. So in the figure itself I'll have my prediction versus R test results the best fit line and also what are the accuracies which are obtaining using this code. So if we can run the code here now, so it's running to each APCO and seeing what is the loss as you can see here and it gave us a result of 0 0.90 as our correlation and mean absolute error as 39.31. But if we see, if we run it again, we can see that the correlation has increased to 0.91 and the mean absolute error also decreased. So this thing is happening because we did not ask the training and testing data to be having a random seed so that every run we make will not change this result. So if we just close this and one step we will do here is we will add these lines of random seed of 42 so that it does not cause any issue. We will import this package as well and run it again so that we see the results. So now we got an RMSC of 0.9 and absolute error of 43.9. However many times we run this code, we would be getting the same result as what we got now. So in this way, we can develop a simple feed forward neural network to predict tomorrow's discharge. If you have understood the concept, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and share it with people whom you think this can be useful.